it's a menorah, and each branch of the menorah is assigned a, a verb class. Let me see if I can share it with everybody. So this is known as the binyanim verb menorah. So binyan means building, but it also refers to a verb class. Binyanim are the verb classes. So this menorah has three branches on the right and three on the left. And then it also has the main candlestick on the middle. The three branches on the right represent active verb classes and the three branches on the right represent passive verb classes. Um, with respect to the active verb classes, um, the differences are subtle. It's still, as we discussed, your standard uh, man hit boy, um, subject, verb, object. But the verb itself has a shade of meaning. Uh, we call it, uh, in, in the case of the second verb class, an intensive condition. And in the case of the third verb class, we call it a causative condition. So what do we mean by that? Uh, for example, we have in English the word to write. You might think of that as a simple uh, pa'al verb, active verb class, to write. What if we have to engrave? So instead of writing, maybe we're taking a chisel and we're engraving in stone. So that would be what's known as an intensive of the verb of the verb to write is to engrave. It's an intensive form. And in fact, in Hebrew, the word to write is katav. And the, the word for to chisel would be kitev. So I think actually Moses michatev et haotiot ba'avanim. He, he, he chiseled the letters into the stones when God gave the commandments. We also have what's known as a causative, which would be, for example, God caused Moses to write the, the words down uh, or to, to write the words down on the, on the stone or let's use a different verb. Let's get away from the verb to write. Let's take the word uh, to, to bring or to, to, to come. The word to come, and I think I give that as an example down here. The word for come is bo. Ani bo, I come. He, he ba'a, she comes. Hu bo, he comes. But what if I cause him to come? In other words, I bring him to me. That's a, a causative formation of, of the word bo. It's he vi, le ha vi. Ani me vi et ali. I bring the woman to me. Ani, um, I brought students to study Torah, something like that. So this is a little bit in the way of an introduction to these Hebrew verb classes. And, and I think you'll find they're a lot of fun and really will just expand your ability to understand Hebrew meanings a great deal as we study them uh, slowly, slowly over time. So the idea was that we would take a look at a verse of Hebrew and maybe identify a few of these verb classes in action. And actually, we had this verse yesterday, Gideon, you may recall. But we're going to take a look at it once more, keeping in mind uh, this idea of uh, Hebrew verb classes. So we're going to look specifically at the verb Allah and how it relates to La Alot and the Shoresh Qatar and how it relates to Lihaktir. It's kind of hard to avoid this being more or less a lecture. I, I, I'm trying to think how I can get people, get everybody involved. 
a little bit. Um, Peter, could you read the first word that's in red on this worksheet? The first red vocabulary word. La seat. Nice. La seat. So this is a, a form of the word nasa, which means to carry. And it's it's the equivalent of saying it's the equivalent in front of us a Kiswahili stem like kusoma to read is like an infinitive. La seat is to carry or to bear. Nasa is carry, lasate is to carry or to bear. Let's take a look at how it, it fits into a, a Hebrew sentence. Um, Gideon, could you give us maybe the first two lines of the, of the sentence, of the, the verse? Uvahor. Yeah. Uvahor oto bikal. Shivte Israel Li Le Kohen La La Lot La Alot. Oh, La Alot, I'm sorry. La Alot. And just two more words. Al. Al. Miss Bet. Be, Miss Bet. Behi. Well done. That that's perfect. That's a good stopping point. Uvachor Oto, and I chose you. I chose him, namely the Levites, is what we're referring to. This is the man of God coming to Eli uh, at the end of Eli's days, and and chastening him with respect to the degradation of the the Levite service at Shiloh, and. Um, Reminding Eli that um, God gave certain privileges with respect to the temple service to the Levites, which were a part of the, to, to the Levite tribe. Uvachor Oto, and I, I chose the Levites, Mikol Shivte Yisraeli, from all the tribes of Israel, Li, for me, to serve as Kahun. Kohanes to serve as priests. La alot al misbechi to go up on my la alot to go up. Allah means went up or basically means go up. La alot to go up. So we see a in form la alot to go up. Take this word this word Allah, which means went up, and let's understand it's it's in the first verb class, Gideon. The first verb class is known as pa'al. Let's all repeat together, pa'al. 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 Good. Pa'al is your first Hebrew verb class, and it's an, act, it's an active verb class, pa'al. And in the present tense, which is also sometimes known as the present participle, we have a cholam and we have a sego in the masculine and a kamatz in the feminine. So the characteristic in the, in the present participle of the pa'al is this cholam after the first radical of the of the shorish of the root so we have the first radical which is ayin then we have the cholam which is the marker of pa'al and then depending on whether we have masculine or feminine we have a eh or a ah. peter could you kindly read the four um conjugations of of allah in the pa'al binyan starting with ola Ola. Good. Next. Ola. Ola. Good. Olim. Good. And typically we 
uh, accent the sec the last syllable in Hebrew words. So it will be ole, ola. You want to try it once more? Ole. Ole. Nice. O -o ole. Ola. Mm -hmm. Nice. Olim. Good. Olim. And lastly. Olit. This is a cholam. Olot. Olot. Yeah. Very nice. Olot. Let me just make sure I'm not uh, failing to welcome somebody in. Oh, Gabriel joined us. Gabriel, welcome. Uh, thank you. Um, good. Johanna, the, the translation is he goes up, she goes up, they go up, masculine form, olim, or they go up, mas a feminine form, olot. Um, where did it go? Here we are. Or it could be we go up, anachnu olim. If it was a group of men, anachnu olim, we go up. Or if it was a group of woman, women, anachnu olot, we go up. So we understand that in Hebrew, um, masculine and feminine uh, um, is a is a big part of, of verbal con verb conjugation, masculine and feminine, and also in in adjectives, um, adjectives have to be matched with the gender of the noun, like a kelev is the is a dog, a kalba is a female dog. So a a a, a red kel, a red dog would be kelev adom, and a a red female dog would be kalba adoma. Okay, so this idea of olim is masculine and olot is feminine. It's an important part of our understanding of uh, putting verbs together. Ole is a masculine form, he goes up. Ola is the feminine form, uh, she goes up. Uh, Johanna, could you give us the pronunciation of the next vocabulary word? Yeah, the smoke. Right. It is Qatar. Right. So if we thought of some sentence um, to smoke, but we're not talking about smoking a cigarette. We're talking about um, smoke um, coming up from a fire, basically. Um, and actually, I can't think of a, of a pa'al verb class example, katar. Um, I can't think of it. This is an instance where um, the verb class that's used is the causative to cause something to go up in smoke. So in, in the Bible, we talk about causing the sacrifice to go up in smoke. Some of the sacrifices had to be completely burned on the altar. And um, in those passages, it refers to the haktir et a carbon to to cause the carbon to to ascend to be to com ascend completely in smoke. Or we talk about the ketoret, which is a a noun that comes from the word katar. A ketoret means incense. The haktir et a ketoret to cause the incense to go up in smoke. So we understand. Um, a little bit more about the causative verb class. This is the third of the active verb classes. Um, Joseph, could you read the the, the present part, part participles of of the of the of the the yes. heel of the of Qatar? 
Yes. These, these would be the present participles of the, Maktir. the binyan heel. Okay, go ahead. Maktir. Scroll down kindly. Maktir. Sure. Maktira. Up, down like that. Good. Ma Sorry, you are scrolling. That's okay. Maktir. Maktira. Is that right? I started. Is that better? Okay. Yes, yes. I start. Okay. Maktir. Maktira. Maktirim. Mak Maktiro. Maktirot. Maktirot. Yes, Maktirot. Maktirot. Nice. So the translations would be he caused the smoke to go up. Maktir. Maktira. She caused the smoke to go up. Maktirim. They caused masculine. The men caused the smoke to go up. Or we caused, as a group of men, the smoke to go up. Maktirim and Maktirot. Uh, the women caused the smoke to go up. Or we, a group of women, caused the smoke to go up. Look carefully, Joseph. Uh, maktir. Maktira. What is the... the is a hand what up, is, hand up. Yeah. Joanna is raising a hand. Please, Johanna, question. Yeah, so I was thinking about the uh, group that is mixed with um, male and female. So mm -hmm. it would go to this masculine, right? Right. This uh, maktirim. Right. A, a, a classic example of, of patriarchal bias. But anyway, it goes to the masculine, right? Um, but my question to you, Joseph, is what is the, the clue? What is the marker that we see, uh, that, that tells us we're looking at this causative to cause something to happen? What do you, what do you note in these conjugations that you just read? Uh, in this binyan, I can see that, uh, the word, uh, the shorish, Maktir is repeating uh, throughout every word. Right, yes. right, right. And that's 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 the most important thing to recognize is that we have the shorish working for us in every in every uh, conjugation. But how is it working for us? What is the what is the what is the prefix, for example, that is that is the clue for the, the he feel binyan. And what is the infix? That's the clue for our he feel binyan. So what the prefix is, is the mem. Okay. Yes, the mem. And right, and the infix is the yud. And, and you can hear even in the name of the binyan, the name of the binyan is he feel. So we have, um, well, that doesn't really help because it, it has the hey at the beginning instead of the mem. But um, the mem is the, the the clue for the present tense of the he feel mak, tir, and then the yud in between the second and third radical of the of the of the root between the tet and the resh. So the mem is our prefix, and then we have the yud infix between the, the tet. And the rate. Maktir, Maktira, Maktirim, Maktirot. Uh, 